following is a paid program. The opinions expressed are not necessarily those of WNBU and Interbanks Media. Money. Welcome to All Things Money with David Blaine, a thoughtful and revealing discussion of actionable ideas and effective strategies to help you through the complex world of investing, taxes, and real estate. Now, with All Things Money, here's David Blaine. Hello and welcome to All Things Money. I'm your host, David Blaine. Thank you for joining us today on 94.1 FM WNBU, as well as cable TV 10 in New Bern, North Carolina. I hope you're having a great start to 2013. I know that, that we are. Uh, if you have any comments or questions for the show, we love to hear from you. We've got a lot of good shows coming up, but we've always got room to insert some ideas from our viewers and listeners, so feel free to reach out to us. The phone number here is 252-633-0107. Our email at the show here is allthingsmoney at dlblaine.com. And, of course, you can always head over to the website, www.dlblaine.com, and there's a big Contact Us button there. You'll also find archived copies of the shows. It's a great resource. We set up this knowledge center where we have archived copies of years and years' worth of shows, uh, both video, audio, as well as um, all the articles we've written for different publications have been published. And we've recently been transcribing at least a portion of the show so that when you search, you can find shows about a topic that, uh, that, that interests you. So anyway, head over to the website there, dlblaine.com, and there's some great information. Uh, got a lot of stuff here to cover with you. Uh, one thing this week, just as I came in the studio, I was talking with Phil Knight. We're going to come on the Phil Knight Show on Friday at 8 and talk a little bit about the IRS and the taxpayer advocate. Uh, I don't know if anyone's ever heard of the taxpayer advocate. I don't want to go into this too much today. We're going to do it on the Phil Knight Show, but the taxpayer advocate is the division of the IRS that advocates for the taxpayer, believe it or not. They're not there to collect money. They're there to resolve problems with the, the IRS. And the head of it is a lady by the name of Nina Olson, and she's been there for several years and actually does an excellent job. And every year, she's required to give a report to Congress. And this thing is several hundred pages long, and it has some real nuggets of wisdom in there. And it's unbelievable when you listen to it to realize this actually came out of a government entity. But we'll be covering some of that uh, on Friday. Okay, so one thing I wanted to touch on today that we talked about previously was uh, bear markets. We have gone uh, since the market bottom, we're talking about the U.S. stock market in 2009, actually the global markets uh, bottomed in, in March of 2009, and since then we've had a few stumbles along the way. We had a, a debt fight and we had a, um, you know, the debt downgrade of the U.S. Um, Treasury bonds and some other things. We've had, you know, 15, 20 percent declines, but they were fairly short and shallow. And, but we've basically been in, a, you know, kind of a mini bull market since 2009. And, you know, bull markets, uh, one thing you can say for certain about them is at some point they're going to come to an end and you've got to suffer some, some pain. Um, now, we've talked about this before. If, if you had a crystal ball or some sort of foresight and you could figure out when the, the bear market was coming and get out of the way, and then get back in when the market started going up. I mean, you would you would become a billionaire uh, very instant, very quickly. Um, no one historically has proven the ability to do that. Um, millions and millions of people try. Millions and millions of people make forecasts. And so the only ones you hear about are maybe the ones that, well, they got that call right or that call right. In fact, when people come in to our office, the the financial crisis of 2008 was a financial crisis. It was not a typical recession. And so we did end up reducing our stock exposure, um, keeping portfolios conservative. But I, I am honest with people. And I tell them that this was not due to some great foresight, um, that we had a bad feeling about, about things and the data was just being very, uh, did not look good. But in reality, things could have turned out uh, much, the, you know, nothing could have happened. And so we attribute it to 
um, very fortunate, uh, you know, an element of luck in there. And I tell people, you know, don't plan. That's not our typical style is to try to, you know, forecast these type of things. It's just this particular crisis was a financial crisis as opposed to a normal uh, recession. But for the most part, we attribute it to just good fortune that we were able to avoid most of that downturn. But we don't have any sort of crystal ball. And in fact, when normal recessions come around, we, we prefer to uh, invest our way through them rather than to try to get out and get back into the markets. Anyway, so the reason I kind of set this up that way is to explain that you, as an investor in some sort of risk asset, that's what you're getting paid for. You're getting paid for the bear market. And I went through um, a couple shows ago a quote from Alexander Hamilton talking about um, the what he called a necessary evil. It's one of the, that, that phrase, you, you may hear it a lot, and one of the earliest uh, recordings of it by a famous person was Alexander Hamilton where he was talking about um, the citizenry and you know government and, and things like that and he talked about that um, necessary evil to oppose the power that, that is in place anyway so necessarily what is it it's an unpleasant necessity it's something that you must do that is unpleasant and so in investing that is what we call a bear market is a necessary evil or you have to endure the declines in your portfolio. That's what you're getting paid for. Um, at the safest level, at least currently today, you have short-term U.S. Treasury bills. Maybe you could throw in some corporate, uh, short-term corporate paper there. But and you get paid. There's no. There's not a lot of question as to in 30 days the 30-day T-bill if you can get your money back in 30 days. There's not a lot of question. The value is not volatile. As you go out and you start investing in stocks or commodities or real estate or, or anything longer term bonds, the price of these investments fluctuates and the return is not guaranteed. There's no assurity that if you buy a stock today and you're saving for your kid's college in seven years, there's no assurance that in seven years the value will be the same as it is today. And so that is the risk. There's also the risk if you're investing in individual companies, you know, um, like Google, Apple, Coke, you know, something like that. There's no assurance that in seven years that company will even be in existence. There's no assurance that a dividend from Bank of America or BB&T Bank will continue and you will get paid for all those years. So there's risk involved as far as the timing and amount of the return that you will receive. Well, coming up on our first break, when we come back, we'll continue talking about bear markets and why they're a necessary evil and why they're actually an important part of investing and why you have to endure them. So for all things money, I'm David Blaine. We'll be right back.